Hello everybody, Brad Wolfsburg here with Bay City Electric Works. I'm going to give you a real brief overview on how to operate this uh, generator here. I'll let you guys uh, use your new toy here. So you got four doors, two on each side that allow you to get to the engine. You have a lock here. You unlock it, door opens up, and you get a nice little catch to actually hold this thing open so the door doesn't close on you in the wind. So you got an engine right here. And then on your other side here, this is what's called the alternator. This is what actually makes your power. So on this side here, you got a couple components. You got a battery, a few other parts to your engine. When this stuff's running, you definitely want to keep your hands out of here because this does get a little warm. But normal startup, when you come up to a site, what you'd want to do is park this thing, get it set up, leveled out as best you can. You don't have to be perfect, but you want to get into this side of it right here. It may be a little hard to see, but down right in here is a battery disconnect switch. So normally that thing would be in your off position. Right now it's showing it on. So this is off. So if you're storing the unit, you'd want it there. You'd want it here when you want to go to run it. So that turns everything on. That way your battery doesn't go dead. And if you come around this side here, right here is your actual controller. So when you first turn it on, this thing boots up. The alarm will come on, but that allows you to silence it. You see a basic menu here. This one's pretty intuitive. It gives you a knob here. So you, to navigate through, you rotate left or right and press in. Just kind of follow what the screen's telling you here. If there's any active events, like alarms right now, right now this thing's a little cold, so it's going to give you a coolant temperature low warning. Anything that comes up, it'll turn the buzzer on. You, once again, you use this to silence it. So to get out of this... You rotate all the way to the end, it tells you to press to return. So it gets you out, main menu. Metering, that shows you all your specifics with your generator and your engine, and it gives you an overview menu. So you just simply rotate your knob to select which one you want. You get a little arrow here, and you press in to select it. To get out of any menu, you move it all the way back up to you see this little back arrow, press in. Gets you back to your main menu. So for example, basic information you need would probably be in this overview menu here. Press in. Yeah, I did it too quick. That gets you your overview, so it gives you a couple different icons and shows you what's going on. And it rotates through, gives you your stuff with your voltage, your engine temperature, all the other fun deals with that. Uh, before I get too complex into here, I'll walk you through a couple basic connection points. So right here is probably what you guys are going to primarily use. You've got a couple 120 outlets right here. And then you have some larger 122, 40, 50 amp outlets. we have got three of them. These are for a cam lock connection for if you want to get full power out of this thing and into a bigger distribution box. Now this generator can do 120, 208, 122, 40, 277, 480. Uh, 120, 208, 277, 480, they're both three phase. Uh, 122, 40, single phase. So probably in most days you're going to use the 122, 40 section, which is what it's already set up for. You have breakers for each one of your outlets here. The only thing that's a little bit different is this one right here. It's actually got a plug instead of a receptacle. This is to provide power for your battery charger and your block heater to keep the engine warm. So if you need to charge it up, if it's in standby or something, you plug this into a regular wall outlet. Uh, going up a little bit further, you have an emergency stop. Something goes wrong, you need to stop this thing right away. You press in. Controller immediately goes into a fault and starts beeping. So to clear it out, you move the switch back out. Just pull it back out. Anytime you get an alarm or anything on your controller, there's two types. There's a warning and a fault. And you can see the lights up here to tell you. Any sort of fault's going to stop, where you actually have to come back, reset it to turn it back on. A warning's not going to stop it, but it's going to tell you something's definitely not right. So with this thing here, if you need to clear it out, off is also your reset. So you just simply press in again, and it'll take it right back to a warning. Now this controller always wants to be an auto. The actual intention with this is it's designed to be wired into a building where something tells us to fire up automatically. So normally it wants to be in here, into this mode, before everything will clear out. So it'll always give you a warning saying you're not in this auto position. But for example, if you did want to run it, you would simply press here. engine fires up and runs. So when you're done, normal stopping, you just simply hit off.
engine will come to a stop. Once you're all done, then you just go back to that battery switch, turn it off to shut it down. Uh, real quick, just kind of walk you through some of the other points on this generator. Let's come on over to this side here. Got two more doors just like the other side. This side is your engine. So over here is a couple different filters. You need to check the oil. It's this little yellow dipstick right here. It's going to work just like a car. You don't want to do this while it's running. You get oil all over you if you do. But you have a little dipstick in there that will give you the level. And it's got two marks, an add and a full. And you just want to make sure you're in between there. So if for some reason you run out of fuel, diesel engines are notoriously hard to get them to back start or start back up again once you get air in the fuel system. This little device right here is called a priming pump. You can use this to help pump fuel into the engine to help get you going. Just simply press in and it's a spring return to come back out. You'll get a good amount of hand pressure once it's all primed up, but if you got air, this is usually really easy to operate with a simple thumb press. Uh, going up on top, it's a little harder to see, but on the top of this guy here is your radiator. So you got a cap up there. You obviously don't want to check that when this thing's warm or hot. You want to do it when it's cold, but it's just like your car. You want to open it up and make sure you got coolant in there. If for some reason you need to do anything with it, if you get too much in it or something, it'll actually travel down through this hose into a little catch can that's down here. And there's actually a cap on it so you can see what's in there. You don't need to add coolant to that part. It's normal for a little bit to go into it, and as it gets cold, it'll pull it back out back into the engine. Once this thing's done, you just simply put that back on if you need to. And then go on over here a little bit. Just back over here. So on this side too, you've got your air filter. And then this thing's kind of cool. If you ever needed a longer runtime, you have the ability to hook this into a much larger external tank. That's what these two little connectors here are for. If you do need to use that though, it gives you a valve right here. Sorry, I'm kind of jumping around a little bit there. But you got a lever, so it's either up or down. So if it's that way, it wants to use the built-in tank. If it's this way, it uses a remote tank. And there's actually a sticker right there that shows you how it works. Normally, you can just leave it there and be good to go. Uh, you, earlier I mentioned you have a charger and a block heater to help keep this engine ready to go. Those connectors are right here. So these little outlets tie into that one that's on the back panel. You've got a charger right here. It's a little hard to see, but that's what helps keep your battery charged up and ready to go. So on this side, there's not a lot, whole heck of a lot else that you got to really worry about. It's always a good idea before you go to run it. You want to just kind of glance at the engine. Make sure nothing's leaking, nothing's loose, nothing seems out of normal. You know, you got a whole bunch of different connections in here, coolant, fuel, engine oil, things like that. So it's always a good idea just do a quick visual check, make sure nothing's leaking before you run it. Other than that, it's pretty pretty self-explanatory. Yeah.